Welcome to Power and Performance. Brought to you by Morris Lubricants, this channel celebrates the very best of British engineering. Exclusive content, behind the scene builds and ambitious projects that show you how we can merge modern and traditional techniques. You can find it all here and much more. I am Charlotte Bowden and standing next to me is engineer extraordinaire Alex Sharphouse. Hello Alex. Hello. Could you please explain to everybody what exactly it is that you do? We're an engineering company in the Lake District um, and we specialise in traditional engineering skills, techniques um, and sort of bringing forward things of the past and keeping them going for the future. What kind of vehicles do you work on? Anything really. We've done such a large range now, but we sort of specialise mainly in steam. But if it's traditionally made um, using old techniques, that's right up our street. So how did this all begin? Like, you know, when was the first time that you remember being sort of spanners on? From when I could pick a spanner up, really. It started off sort of taking the family lawnmower to bits, buying broken engines, doing them up, old motorbikes. And then I got a grey Fergie tractor and did that up. So it sort of just progressed and progressed, really. Can you take me back to taking the lawnmower apart? How old were you when you did that? And did you manage to put it back together again? Eventually I did, yeah. Um, I think I was about five or six and um, we had this old lawnmower and, and it, it was sort of there looking at me and I thought, I wonder how it works. So I just started taking bits off, found some spanners and um, took it to bits. So from lawnmower to steam engines, that is quite a massive hmm. jump. How did you get there? My dad stood me on a steamroller when I was four or five. Something must have happened that day that stuck in it and I was intrigued by it. But grew up watching Fred Dibner on the TV, thinking it was wonderful. I always remember, all I ever wanted was a steamroller. I was 18 and a friend of mine rang me up and said, there's a steamroller advertised in the Farmer's Guardian. And I rang up about it and this roller was just completely in bits. It was on a farm. It was been the farmer's father who took it to bits years ago and it literally was just rusty parts lying in the back of a shed covered in straw and chicken muck. And uh, that was it, bought that and uh, went from there. You make it sound so easy. Yeah, well it, well, it wasn't. How do you restore this pile of bits? Where do you go? And you go and start talking to people and go and have a go. And I think that's quite an important thing, I think now, that people come and ask you how to do something, that you show them what to do. Because I don't think if, if we don't do that, you know, what we, we learn, we take with us. If we don't pass it on to generations now, that's a bit of a shame. So from that first steam engine that you rebuilt to today, what's the biggest, most ambitious, maybe craziest project that you've worked on? Um, I think of my own project was building Talisman. That was a really big undertaking. And I generally didn't know whether it was achievable. I mean, most times when you start a project, you sort of, you can see the, the goal at the end. That, I didn't, I didn't know whether it was achievable. And we just set off to do it. We broke it down into bits um, over six years and eventually we got there. But can you just sort of explain to people what that actually is? Yeah, um, so Talisman's um, a B6 Fowler road loco. So a road locomotive is basically equivalent to a heavy haulage lorry of today for moving large loads. They, you know, it's a big engine, um, but it's quite fast on the road. It's very powerful. How fast are we talking? Well, it, it probably it sits comfortably about 15 to 18 mile an hour, but you, know, you, can, you, can, you can push it on. I mean, it doesn't sound very fast, does it? You go, oh, I've done 20 mile an hour. People are, you know. <laughs> but when you're on something that weighs uh, neck end of 20 tonnes and um, nine foot wide, you know, it, it is, um, you know, it's quite exciting. And you built that from scratch, from raw material to roaring down the road, quite literally. Yeah. that I think that's, you, you forget really, and, and it is a big achievement when you, look, when you do look at it and go, yeah, we literally, we didn't have anything. There was, there was nothing at all when we first started the project. You know, so every nut and bolt and washer and single piece, you look at it, you can point to anything on it. I can tell you where it came from, how we made it, what it does. What kind of skills, tools and techniques do you use in your workshop? Um, well, we've developed over a number of years quite a large range, really. And it's more for the fact of where do you get things done? If somebody comes to us with a particular project, you haven't got a great window of places you can go to get certain stuff done. So we've sort of almost had to learn how to do a lot of it and, and develop techniques ourselves. You know, example, we can turn, you know, a seven foot back wheel off a traction engine. We can put that into a machine and spin it and machine it, which, you know, the machine to do that weighs over 20 tons. So, we, we, you know, scaling up to work on bigger and bigger things, we, you know, overhead cranes that can pick up 20 tonne, 
very, very accurate um, surface grinding for valves and faces. And then we do fabrication of, you know, steel work, folding, bending, do lots of different techniques of riveting from air hammers to hydraulic squeezers and drilling holes. Building steam engines is drilling holes. Drilling holes <laughs> and putting something in the hole. That, that's what it all comes down to, really. It's, uh, it's uh, a lot of time and it's all quite heavy work in, in the steam side of it. But, um, yeah, we, we, we're geared up in it and we do it. It's fair to say you've got every base covered in your workshop. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're more or less. And how, is it, how long has it taken for you to kind of get the workshop established? You know, do you have different areas where you do these different things and, and very designated specific sort of parts to it? Yeah, we've, we've grown, you know, from it, from it being a hobby to a little workshop where you can, you know, manage to trying to make it more productive. Uh, at one time, we used to sort of, you know, you jack something up with lots of jacks and sleepers and eventually lift up something that was heavy. Now we can just pick it up with a crane and turn it over and one man can do it in, in five minutes. So there's been quite a lot of thought into how we grow the workshop and how we um, look and tackle jobs that we do. And why do you think it's important to blend, you know, these traditional techniques and use the older tools with, you know, computer-aided design and things like that? Because some people would be sort of like, no, it must be done the old-fashioned way, but that's not what you do. You respect that and you yeah. use those traditional uh, sort of ethos, values and techniques and tools, but you also blend it with, you know, cutting-edge technology. There's a place for everything, isn't there? And it's almost like going, well, you know... We've got mobile phones today, so we don't send letters, you know, as a rule. If you want to speak to someone, we use a phone. But, you know, we still enjoy driving around in a vintage car, but you'll take your phone with you. So it, it's build and, and rivet a piece of plate together, but we might have drawn it up on card and taken it to a company to have it profile cut. Um, but then we'll bring it back and put traditional rivet in it. So it, it, there is definitely room, you know, for both parties. And, and at the end of the day, we're trying to do something to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. And if these technologies were available 100 years ago and these things were being made, they would have used that technology. So why not, you know, embrace it, use it. But the end product at the end of it is exactly what we're trying to achieve is how it would have been originally. So as an ambassador for Morris Lubricants, an engineer and the face of power and performance, what sort of things can people expect to see on the channel? Uh, well, we're trying to showcase... Um, what we do and interesting things that you maybe don't get to see on a day-to-day -day basis and i'm very very fortunate to have the support of morris lubricants behind us who have um sort of understood and and got involved with what we do um from a basis of we need oil and lubricants for what we do which is great which is how we got to know them too they think what we do is quite special so it's a fantastic um, partnership we've got Moving forward with the, the projects, hopefully, that we, we can show on power and performance, uh, gives a real wide range of different skills, steam engines to heavy engineering, real big stuff, down to more intricate things, vintage cars, engines, strange projects, history, but in a modern world. Well, I'm very excited to see how this series unfolds. Well, I think we've teased people enough. Stay tuned for the next episode of Power and Performance with Alex Sharphouse when we will be revealing some of the projects that we have got in store. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so you don't miss an episode.